Justine N. Arden will serve first from the far end of the court. 24 years old, 28 career titles, five Grand Slam championships. And her first, uh, fourth and final of a Grand Slam this year. Quite what an amazing effort. Absolutely. You think about getting the final one, you have to make six victories to get into that seventh game, a grinding two-week tournament trail, a match trail to get to the final. She's done it four times in the tension-filled Grand Slams. And for me as a player, it's always very interesting to note what players are doing early in the match, and that includes the very first point. And what I see from Maria Sharapova is exactly how she started against Moresmo yesterday, trying to attack on everything. And I'd like you, uh, Renee, to take a close look at the, uh, the service motion of NR Den tonight, see if there's anything that's a little different, or is she sticking with this current style, which uh, is by all accounts uh, because of the back problems, which do bother her, and this serve is designed to relieve some of that. And there's that beautiful backhand for a winner. Maria Sharapova is vital for her to get the ball deeper to the backhand tonight so that she's not doing a lot of the running. But um, I actually found out a little information. There's not, uh, not a lot of the surface motion changes from any injury. She decided that uh, she thought she wanted to make it a little bit more explosive and a little bit more compact, kind of along the style of an Andy Roddick, the way he takes his racket up above his head. But uh, Andy Roddick's a very different uh, commodity compared to Justine Ennard-N, about six inches at least. In other words, it might not be appropriate for her that it's uh, just because he's doing it is with his size uh, difference, his height difference, doesn't I, make sense? Or what are you, what are you saying about no, that? I, you know, Andy Roddick gets an amazing knee bend into his serve, yes. goes up a, a huge amount, and gets a lot of extension into his serve, and, yes, and he is very tall. So that helps. Not so much for Hennon. Well, two great points to start. I'm seeing a very composed Maria Sharapova, not overplaying, staying within herself, knowing that she has the bigger game as far as the ground strokes are concerned. You heard her say at the start of the match, I want to be patient. But being patient and being aggressive is almost, uh, you know, you want to do the both of them, especially early on. She wants to establish that she's going to hit the big shots when she gets the opportunity. And if she was watching that match yesterday, Tim, she'll be going after the second serve. Backhand from Ann Arden to wipe out one of the breakers. The third, third, the fourth. Fourth. And a good serve. Maria's most difficult shot, obviously, is her forehand. That's the one that breaks down a little bit. She likes to flip the racket into the left hand sometimes when she's on the run. She doesn't want to be on the run a lot tonight. Long forehand from Maria to Deuce. These players haven't played each other since early in the year, and lots happened since then. They both had uh, some injuries to deal with, not serious ones, but nagging things. The last time they played was in Dubai. That's a tournament that's very early in the year. 7 5 6 2 for NR Dan, and at the Australian Open that begins the year, apart from a couple of two nuts, two nuts for it. In the semifinals, the three setter that Renee talked about at the Australian Open won by Justine. So she gets herself three points in a row now and a game point. First, first, first. Sound from Maria in that first game, a little unusual. 
<laughs> I'm sure that will come. <laughs> oh, I'm sure we all expect it. And Arden with a, a little alley at the end of it because she climbed out of two break points. Well, I think it's important for Maria not to hang on the baseline too much. If she was watching the match yesterday against Jankovic, Jankovic, who's not known to be a very good volleyer, really pressed Hennen from the baseline, forced her into the corners and eventually found her way into the net. And it caused Hennen Arden to make so many forced errors, not unforced errors, but having mm -hmm. to go for the passing shot is difficult against anybody. And it doesn't matter if you can volley or not. You see that presence of the net, it tends to make you over hit. So I think it's very important for Maria to come forward when she has the opportunity tonight. Which she did effectively against Maresma. Good serve helps everything. We talked about it at the top of the show. It is very important for her to serve well, for the both of them to serve well. They rely heavily on those free points on serve. Both have big serves up above the hundreds. Many times get up to the 110 region, the both of them quite comfortably. Maria has a problem sometimes with that forehand. When the ball gets a little bit close to her body, she tends to pull off it and not get the racket head through the ball. And sometimes that, that is her issue on the forehand. So it's important for her to stay loose, keep her feet moving so she can continue with the racket head through the ball. Make good contact. A double fault. 15-30, a little opportunity here for NR Dan. We had two break points in the first game, and it came back with consecutive points to hold. baseline in our den trying to make the drop shot yeah, that players look a little tight to me that was a little desperation shot that one she was well behind the baseline like you said really gave Maria Sharapova a lot of time to see that ball off the racket and when you know that your opponent can see what you're going to do puts a lot of pressure on you hit it perfect but early in that point I think Maria Sharapova had an opportunity to come in and put the pressure on Hennen and she did not Maybe some nerves, like you were saying. But you have to believe in what you have. And you have to believe in your best forehand and coming forward. Good service there for 40-30. You'll see the players mix the serve around. They'll go for the open spots. They'll go for the wide one down the tee. But often the one that they'll use sometimes is into the body. It really causes your opponent to have no angle on the return. On the screen there is Yuri Sharapova, Maria's father. Always intense. Thank you. Thank you. Two double faults in this game. We did talk about how well she served through the tournament, so you just have to assume that thing. She doesn't. She doesn't look. It's hard to say when, when she looks relaxed because she's so focused and so intense. But uh, what I, what I'm seeing here is 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 a tightness, and, and I think it's reflected in two double faults. Well, I think sometimes you can take your time too much. You lose a little bit of the flow of your serve and the 
the flow of what's going on. And sometimes if you take a little bit too long, your body and your mind start thinking that little bit too much. And I think that's what's happening here. Trying to calm the nerves, but sometimes you got to let it flow. And there again, come to forehand into the net. Well, there's no question that the girls are both a little bit nervous. Maria's not getting the ball out of the center of the court there. But having said that, and an Arden with a shank forehand, you don't see those often. Important for Maria to try and get this game on the board early. Settle the nerves down. Win the service game. She misses the backhand. Again, she's been caught a few times with the ball getting too close to her body. And when that happens, that's usually a sign for me that you're not moving your feet that's as well as feet. you normally would. Absolutely. So much of this game is about feet. How are you moving them or not? Oh, beautiful forehand drive from Den. She has a break pointer first. And then well, a good serve, but a better return down the middle of the court forced Marie to really just be able to try and get it back. And just seen Anna Arden out here, just great footwork and attacked that forehand. But as you can see, made the move to come forward afterwards, and that's a sign of confidence. And a, and a sheriff over service, which has been so solid through the whole tournament, struggling here in her first service game of this championship match feeling that she'll get over this, but she's got to get through the first game one way or the other. <laughs> oh, that's Dang. too good from Anna Arden. Karapova electing to slice back the slice, and she paid that price. Break for Anna Arden and a two-love lead here in the first. It wasn't a bad shot. Anna Arden is not known to hit those ones that well, but what she did so well was really make an aggressive move to it early and really go for it and come in behind it. She knows the importance. She's been here before many times and won a lot more Grand Slams than Maria Sharapova. She understands what it takes, and she understands that an early break and getting on top of somebody you've beaten a, a few times lately, incredibly important. It's almost like Anna Nardin always has that sense of urgency about her in every single match. It doesn't matter who it's against or where it is. <laughs> kind of reminds me a little bit of Steffi Graf, the way Steffi used to play. It did, just didn't matter where it was or who it was against. She was out there to play from the very first point. Her husband, Pierre-Yves, in the orange shirt. Her coach on the left there is Carlos Rodriguez. And with her... A long time around the court since the age of 14. That's long. And again, the little move there from Sharapova. Great forehand, but Justine Anna Arden is one of the best athletes out here on the tour, and she will get that ball back. She will float it down the middle and get herself back into the point. If she knows that somebody's taking a step into the net to possibly take it out of the air, it's going to force her to have to hit a better shot than she wanted to. And we saw that all day yesterday with Yankovic. Up 30, little opportunity here. Now a second serve. And a miss on the backhand service return. It was right there for her. Wasn't stretched out at all. Again, feet. Not coming forward, really hesitating and lifting up on every shot she, that she's missed tonight. Her head's moving away from the ball. She's not staying down through the shot and really turning the shoulders. And again, Tim, you see, she didn't make the move after the forehand. She wanted the winner to be coming from the forehand rather than the mistake from Hennen. And that's the little thing. Hopefully she can recognize, you know, maybe I can just go in behind that. I'll hit it better and I'll force Hennen to do something special instead of trying to hit the winner outright from the middle of the court. 
against someone as good a mover as Henan. That is difficult to do all the time. Rudeal. Ah! And Arden got herself out of the above 30 hole. Second serve here. Whoa, oh. nice reaction. That's not her strength, that kind of a play. So well done, Sharapova, for a break point. What she did here, Tim, is she didn't panic when the ball did come back low. She should have moved in a little bit early, but what she did was she used really good hands. Didn't try and force it, just dropped the racket head, used the pace of the ball coming at you. Beautiful pickup from Sharapova. And Arden got out of a two-breaker situation in the opening service game. Jason Moore again in the second serve. Sharapova hasn't really gone after the second serves so far. No, not anything like Yankovic did yesterday, which no. forced a lot of double faults. That's a little better. Come on. And and the Break for Sharapova. Two games to one, and Arden in the opening set. So the uh, tensions perhaps relieved on the part of both of the young women. Five-time Grand Slam winner. But I think getting through that semifinal yesterday against uh, Amelie Moresma really has given her a boost in confidence. She lost so many Grand Slam semifinals the last couple of years. I think that was a big monkey off her back. Well, I think that was a fault, but it's still a big overall, and the umpire's overall now knowing that challenge system is there. Like I said, Lynn Walsh, a very respected umpire, when she calls that ball, I think the players will give her the benefit of the doubt there. You know, just back to that fold, it's very interesting because you very rarely see the umpires make an overall the linesman now. And I like that. I like the fact that Lynn, even on the biggest stage tonight in the final of a Grand Slam, is willing to still do that. It shows that she's still in control of the match and not relying too much on the technology yeah, I, yet. That's a very good point, Renee. I agree with that. I mean, they should not They should maintain their authority. And, I mean, the player still has the right to challenge. So um, I, I, I like, I like the, what you said, and I agree with it. 100%. Well, I think when it comes to that Yelena Yankovic situation yesterday, if, she, if the question is asked tonight of Lynn Welsh, was it in or out, how did you see it? She is going to give an answer that they will trust mm -hmm. and not stand there and think, oh, and take all this time. It becomes this dramatic moment. Big serve from Maria. We had the feeling she was going to get it going here. You don't suddenly lose your serve after serving so well for an entire two weeks. No, Maria Sharapova, as Justine and Arden, very much when they get into the rhythm on their serve, that's when they start serving well. I saw Maria play a match here. A six love, four love, 40 love had aced the girl three times in the game and then double folded five times after that in the same game. So she can lose her rhythm very quickly. But that hasn't happened in this tournament for her. Now that uh, Sharapova's calling it out. Let's see if she challenges. I think uh, she's looking at her dad, and see, the thing is, the box down there is kind of sort of towards the baseline. It's not right on the baseline. I think she asked her father if that was in, and I think he told her not to challenge because he was right. <laughs> All right. Well, that's our shot tracker proving that point. 40-15. And again, the question asked of Lynn, and she said it's too close for her to make a full decision. If you want to challenge, go ahead. Then, Karakova knocked that long to 40-30. Well, these players need to understand, both of them, when they come forward, it forces their opponent to hit a special passing shot, and not just a regular shot. When people are on the run, the easiest shot 
to hit in the court is a very heavy, deep ball through the middle of the court. But when someone's standing there, it doesn't look so easy to you. Yeah. Yeah. Very good serve into the body at 101 miles an hour. Justine Ananade and probably anticipating the one to the team. Two games on. First, first set. When that one comes into the body, it doesn't give you a lot of room, and you tend to make some errors on, errors on it. So a good comeback here by Sharapova to get things even at 2 all in the first set. An aggressive point by Maria Sharapova, but she misses the forehand. Good return to serve. Fifteen love. It's out. Going for the angle there off that forehand. With the top of the net, so Justine and an Arden riding the ship here. And as her fortunes turned in two games, we're now hearing the shriek building in <laughs> decibels from Sheriff Bubba, who was silent in the first game. Well, which could be a sign of nerves. And oh, sometimes totally. you're not letting that emotion out that you that you normally that she normally does. Holding on to it, possibly not breathing as normal as possible. I mean, what a huge moment for her. Another Grand Slam final. At night, packed house. I don't care who you are and how many times you've done it. This is a special moment. Oh, sure. And, and she's fully aware of it. She was excited about being there. But uh, when you are there, having to hit tennis balls in the court against your opponent. <laughs> Two minutes of tightness. Bad play there by Sharapova. The easy hold for Anna Arden. We're on serve at 3-2. Anna Arden in the first set. And Anna Arden leads three games to two. First set. Now, Dan has so far not shown any problems with her service as she did in the Yankovic match. And they started telling us uh, just this uh, kind of a new uh, technique that she's trying to improve her serve. And we had heard that uh, it had more to do with uh, making her back a little more comfortable, which has been kind of an ongoing uh, problem for her. It bothers her. So far, no problems on her serve. Sharapova beautifully in there. And a nice follow. And for me, this is how Maria Sharapova is going to win this match tonight. She cannot stand on the baseline and hit five and six shots against Justine Enanarden. She is way too tenacious. And as much as we know that Maria Sharapova is one to be feisty and stick in there, she doesn't have the mobility that Justine Enanarden has. So she has to take the initiative early in the point. Ace. And for me, when you're playing in a match of this magnitude and you're going forward and you're winning points at the net or you're being aggressive and winning the points, that's what makes you feel good. So we love with her first ace. And that's a good serve down the tee. Stretching in our dash. She missed the backhand. Just took her eye off the ball a little bit there, and Anardan started running to that forehand side. So anticipated that Sharapova was going to hit it there. But I like the aggressive move again. Big serve down the tee at 111 miles an hour, looking to come forward behind it. Dan, well played. Point there for Justine to 30 all. Well, understanding the importance of attacking the second serve, you can see she runs around the back end and rips the forehand inside out. 
And that type of shot really gives you a lot of easy balls off it. It was right on the baseline, so Sharapova just really defending right away. Game point for Sharapova. Even things at 3-all. Now, if that had hit the net at Wimbledon, that would have gone <laughs> over. But here at the U.S. Open, it is th that net is so tight that for it to drop over the net, you really have to get a little bit of luck on your side. Again, lifting the head up, not staying behind it and turning the shoulders and using the feet to hit the backhand. All arm. When she hits the big serve, it was a 110 mile an hour serve. She has to expect that it's going to come back just as hard sometimes if Hennen guesses where the serve is going to go. an hour, pulls Hennen off of the court. Hennen Arden has a very extreme forehand grip. So when you move her outside of the court like that, it's tough for her to hit that back through the court. She has to do a tremendous angle. You'll see the players that play Hennen will use that serve quite a bit. Forehand error from Hennen Arden, but a good play from Sharapova making a move along the baseline again. We all here were on serve in the first set. Best of three championship match. Winner with the U.S. Open Championship. A nice big million dollar check for the winner. And if Sharapova wins tonight. An additional half a million. The U.S. Open Series. She came in second behind Anna Ivanovich who won uh, the Canadian Open this year and uh, did very well leading up to that tournament. So the cum cumulative points is what it's based on. She's got 250,000 coming to her even if she's the runner-up tonight. And that's the move right there. If Sharapova can step up and take advantage of some of these short balls and follow it in. Put the pressure on Ennen. Fifteen. Pulled her over to the tee. Sharapova's reply was long to fifteen all. Much cleaner set to this point. Eighth game of the set from uh, N. Arden that she was able to muster against Jankovic. She has to be happy she's off to a smoother start. <laughs> Beautiful backhand. 30 15. Well, she wanted that same ball back. That was the Conchita Martinez move right there. <laughs> she's like, I like that point. I want that ball back. I'll wait for it as long as I can. I haven't seen her do that. It was very interesting. See, that's what I always wanted about people that wanted that ball back. Now what do they do? <laughs> she doesn't want that one now. Took another. Conchita Martinez will hold up play to make sure the ball got back to her. Well, she didn't hit that half volley well at all. Sharapova, she was a sitting duck. When she hits that forehand return here, she leaves the court wide open by going to the forehand. You really have to cover a lot more ground. When you hit that forehand inside out, you don't have to cover quite as much ground. Even though Justine was moving to that forehand there, she had a lot of room to hit the ball into. Oh, a beautiful shot from Den. 
Excellent service game for her. The four games to three here on the first set. And that match follows, the championship match follows this ladies' championship match. So uh, certainly encourage you to stay tuned in most parts of the world to be able to see that. Maria Sharapova serving now 3 4. We're on serve. <laughs> As I said earlier, Tim, very important. Maria Sharapova has that type of service motion that when she gets her rhythm, she can really hit her spots extremely well. And earlier this year, when she won the tournament in Miami on hard court at Tier 1, and when she won the tournament not long ago in San Diego, she was serving huge. Ah! Ah! And here at this tournament, and it continued. The best tournament that I've seen her serve from consistently match to match and uh, she was tight at the beginning we, we spotted that she struggled a bit through her first service game but it's gotten better and better and it's something that she works on tremendously hard I see her on the practice court all the time oh, oh that's great that's a couple of the best forehands I've seen from Sharapova really staying turned this time and finishing the forehand, finishing through it and staying through it. You see there, fin the racket finishes over her shoulder. She doesn't come out of it like she normally does, and that's when she's going to hit her forehand well, and that shows me a lot of confidence. Left. Left. Interesting, throwing in a 90-mile-an-hour serve there. Maybe she thinks, look, Hannah Arden's a long way behind the court. So if I can throw in a couple of slower ones just to mix things up a little bit. And that, again, shows me confidence and she, that she's using her head. A 98 mile an hour slider down the tee, and when you're that far behind the baseline, that ball's not coming to you like it is when it's 110 miles an hour. And you see Justine Hannah Arden is just reaching out for that forehand and shanking it because it's not coming at her at the pace that she expects. So, not only is Maria serving well, but she's using her head out here. Four all on serve with a good hold by Sharapova. Good deep reply. And Arden had to react quickly and dumps it in the net. Good service return from Sharapova. First serve. Arden, no doubt, trying for a little more there. 103 miles an hour. Left service. And Maria moving better at that time. Got her feet going. Got a way to give herself a shot at that body serve. Winds up with a point. Love 30. Little chance here. And Hennen, in my opinion, overplaying now. Not getting out of the way when the ball's at her body. So that shows me she's not moving her feet as well and possibly a little bit more nervous. Oh. We'll see if Sharapova steps in and gives this one a crack or if she just, just elects to make Hennen make the mistakes. Another good body serve there. Cannot <laughs> underestimate that type of serve, especially on somebody like Maria, who is a very tall girl, has big strokes, and when that ball gets in there into the body, it's difficult to do anything special with it. Now this is where you have to be careful as a player. Do I go to the body again? If Maria's anticipating that, it could be trouble. Bigger, more aggressive player right now has given herself two breakpoint opportunities to possibly serve for the first set here at the US Open final. <laughs> really just telling you to relax. Trust uh, me, I think he's as nervous as she is, no, no question. <laughs> more so. That he wasn't reading a book an hour before the match. Starting to chew his fingernails. It's long. And a champion point from and an Arden there, 115 miles an hour, her biggest serve of the match. 
senses that she has Sharapova all over the place and rips the forehand. Still down a break point. Again, going for the body serve. You know, sometimes it's so frustrating when you break point down and you, you've hit the same serve and it hits the let, and now you're thinking, okay, what do I do with this serve? Because now she knows where I'm going to go with it. Do I do something different? A lot of mind games out there right now. And a late call. Sharapova was coming in. She didn't need to get there, but no doubt Anna Ardan was aware of her. She will now serve for the first set at five games to four. But they do show you that sign of confidence that everything's okay, because if they look nervous and they look stressed, trust me, that translates onto the court and onto your shoulders. Ball is on her racket here for the first set. If she can hold, she'll take that lead into set number two. Oh. That's a great play. A better than average serve and a terrific forehand behind it. And that right there, as a player, when you're serving for a set, that feels so good to get that first point, not on a mistake, but on a really good point. Backhand side, it was a good serve nonetheless. Well, I think she, all. I think she wanted to go cross court on that and thought, wow, well, I think I can hit the winner down the line, get a, get a bit of an easier point. Facing a player that's been in uh, nine finals out of 12 tour events this year, she's five and three in winning those finals. Ah! Previous eight. Done. Got to be extra careful with those. Mm, trust me, Tim. Nothing's a, <laughs> nothing's an easy shot at this moment, especially in the lights. This was hit really high in the air. She had to be stay patient, keep the feet moving, keep the feet moving. Smart to let it bounce. Absolutely. And Hannah Arden guessed the right way, but just too good there from Sharapova. Fifteen. Oh. Oh, a little much there on the forehand. The all. Two points from the set still. She walk away from there, do a little spin around, and prepare again for the next service here. I think if she had that one again, she'd hit it to the back and then come in instead of trying to hit the forehand winner. That was the one she did earlier in the set. She made it error. The one that's been successful is the inside out forehand and moving into the net behind it. 30 all, second serve at 5-4. Great shot. Huge forehand. And you know, I don't think she's missed a forehand down that line. When and she's moved in behind yeah, it. She's been very solid. And, and when, when a shot goes away for her, it's usually the forehand. It's common with a lot of players, of course. But uh, and watch very carefully at the, uh, in the during the Moresmo match. She was really solid on her forehand for the entire match. It was not a problem for her at all, so she brings that confidence in her tonight. She's got a set point here and a second serve. How many times does that happen on a set point, a match point? It's a let. A let? It was a let. Beautiful serve. First set. First set to Maria Sharapova over Justine Enna Ardan, who's in her fourth Grand Slam final of the year. 
It's the first for Maria since Wimbledon when she won in 2004. She's up a set. And then Arden uh, came back from one set down to beat her in three. And from losing the first set 6-4, came back to win the match 6-1, 6-4 in the third. Second now that was a semi-final. This is a final. It does throw an extra bit of added spice into the match. No question. Arden was down a set to Jankovic in the semi-final and came back to win that match. Long way to go when you're out there against her. <laughs> Nobody knows that better than Maria. She's lost four out of five to her, so she knows she's got to keep the hammer down as best she can against this great competitor across from her, but these are two of the fiercest, maybe the fiercest competitors on the tour. Bend, but they don't buckle. Really love in our den. No, these two, as you said, two of the most competitive people you'll ever meet in your life. Nothing is going to be given to each other tonight. <laughs> Good serve. Pulled her over. And Arden serving so much better tonight than she did in the first half of her match against Jankovic. Incredible difference. So, yeah, well. it was only one double fold on the, the screen right now for her, and there was many more than that yesterday. And this hit there. Got to snap that forehand. 40 15. But the thing that I've noticed really from two love in the first set is that the tennis has been excellent. There's not a lot of unforced errors really from both girls. Maria Sharapova, if anything, has just stepped up her game a little bit and has been more aggressive and ah. serving a little bit bigger when it's counted in that first set. 71% of first serves in for Maria in that first set and 58 for Anna. She's been right around 70% through the tournament. It's obviously made a big difference. It's, it's the best tournament that I've seen her serve. You know, really a, a kind of a quantum leap in her consistency and in addition to her power. And of course, that's a huge weapon. And Tim, that comes from a tremendous amount of hard work. Oh, yes. She's going to put it in. You know, she says she hates to practice. She says that. <laughs> she hates to practice because yeah. she practices exactly. so much. <laughs> right. And that's just dedication to being the best tennis player, not just the most covers that she can be on as the glamour girl. <laughs> that's long. Well long. And then, uh, and then uh, Dan Oles for the opening game of the second set. First game of the second set. And I'll stress it over and over, the Sharapova, the little move when she hits the forehand to come into the net is what is going to make her win this match tonight. It's going to allow her to put pressure on Henan at all times. And you see the first serve percentage there from Sharapova. I mean, when it comes to a four-all game and you're serving your high percentage and serving better, which Maria did to win that set with two great serves at Juice, it allowed her to step up and be confident in those situations to win the set. Surprised to see her. Uh, she wins the set with a minus three ratio. Winners to unforced, but there's not a big number of either. Ten winners, thirteen unforced. Probably about four or five more than you can see. Unforced errors in the match, but some of those came in those first couple of games when she was tight. Well, and a lot of things that they don't show are the forced errors. Yes, the, right. The shots where they've just they've hit such a great shot, and a player will will miss it into the net. Not not due to to just lack of confidence or lack of focus. Just too good a shot that's come at them. Looking love Sharapova, that's long, make it 30 love. Continues to trouble with Anna Arden. She's not giving her a lot to really strike at on first serve. Well, the thing that she's doing really well on the serve is changing the pace, especially to the forehand. That one at 101 miles an hour. So the difference of 10 miles an hour when you're swinging at the ball, it's kind of like in baseball when the when the pitchers throw the change up. 
and you'll see great players just completely swing at the ball because they're not expecting it. And you have a millisecond to, to try and guess where a serve's going and what it's going to do. It's very easy to miss it. Third. third for the match. He's got two aces against that. But also that tends to show me the confidence that she feels in her serve. The first serve that she missed, it was 116 miles an hour, and then that one was 97 miles an hour. So she's deciding that I'm in control of what I'm doing out here on my surf. And even if I have to double fault, every now and again, I'm going to continue to hit it. Justine unhappy with that forehand. And I guess uh, because that backhand of hers is, is so great that uh, if something's going to go wrong, as it is with other players, it's on the forehand side. She's, she's having a little problem with that forehand now. It's amazing how many girls in the top 10 or top 20 in the world where their backhands are much better than their forehands. in the game. Bad miss. She's mad. Well, she knows that the forehand's the weaker side and she's going to get mistakes from it. But you also cannot hit them horribly all the time. And I think right there she was kind of hitting the serve and trying to get back and be ready for the next shot. You have to hit the serve first. That's a good one. Yeah. Over toward the tee and a good serve for one all in the second set. Now, if I was Hennon's coach, I would be telling her to stand a little bit closer to the baseline, that you are making way too many errors off of that forehand simply because the serve is not getting to you at the pace that you expect. You just see where she stands on behind the baseline when Sharapova's serving, a long way behind the baseline. And when you're serving and you see that, you think, wow, if I can get a little bit of angle on this serve, it's really going to be moving away and it's going to be further and further away from her and she's not going to be able to attack me. It gives you a lot of confidence. You see where Maria's standing right on the baseline. About 15 second serve here on Sharapova. This is on the forehand. Now the thing about standing a little closer to the baseline, well that's the moon, that's not the baseline. <laughs> but <laughs> that's not the tennis ball. That's beautiful. But the thing when you stand a little bit closer to the baseline is when somebody hits the serve into your body, you don't quite have the the, the ability to swing free at the return. So there are definite fours and against depending on where you stand on the court. Mm -hmm. But as a returner, you have to be aware of where they're serving. And I think Hennen has to be aware of that's the serve that's hurting you. And, and if you're Maria, she has to recognize that she's getting a lot of cheap points from jamming that serve into her body. So possibly take a step back. 30-15 in Arden. One all in the second, down the set to Sharapova. It's wide. A couple of forehands in this game that I think Sharapova would like to take back. Six unforced errors only in two and a half games here from Sharapova, and I think most of them on the forehand. Good serve from Justine. The hole for 2-1 here on the second set, but Sharapova has a set in hand. And then it's two games to one. Second set. 2004, again another round of 16 against uh, losing to Nadia Petrova. And who could forget that semi-final match against Jennifer Capriati. Oh, yeah, it was terrific. Last year, she lost in the round of 16 to Mary Pierce. Nice little stop volley from Maria Sharapova. I'm always a little bit 
surprised to see her have success at the net with shots like that, frankly, because it, it's, it's not her strength. Again, she practices everything, but it, she doesn't have the great instincts for it. But, you know, she's still been delivering. She's had three or four, a little half volley winner earlier in the, in the uh, set, a couple of other volley winners, a high one, and a little stop volley there. I mean, she's definitely improved in all departments. <laughs> Oh, yes. She's right where you wanted her there, Renee. <laughs> well, again, I just think it's so important for her to continue to move forward because it's a positive move for her. She's serving 100 mi 105 miles an hour there, again down the tee, setting up the short return. Come in behind it. Put some pressure on Anna. She has a good overhead. She has great swinging volleys. Oh, yes. That's a real killer shot. Pretty low. Now, I'm convinced in that situation right there, that Anna Nardin missing a backhand that badly because I think that she was anticipating Sharapova coming in behind that, takes her eye off the ball and misses horribly on that backhand, which is something you very rarely see her do. Game point, get the two all here in the second. there. I thought what you were looking for, Renee, that she was going to hit that forehand inside out come in behind it. Well, she started to make the move and then stopped right there. It was always going to be a difficult volley, but still, she could have probably let it bounce and hit it. Instead, got caught in no man's land and decided, wow, I'm in trouble here, Deci electing to hit it. Really not a good shot with the drop shot. 40-15 still. Commanding service game going. Now she's got second serve here. Oh, yes. Wow. I mean, you had to like Justine's play. It was the right play. Good return. Excellent shot from Sharapova. Two games Beautiful. This was a great seven. shot from Hannah Narden. Probably could have been a little bit deeper. When you don't get it deep enough, it allows your opponent to get a little bit more angle on it, and in that circumstance, beat her with the angle, and Hennon wasn't at the net to be able to make a volley on that. So, good shot there from Sharapova, not to panic. Two all second set, Sharapova won the first 6-4. Great point there from both girls, and Anna Arden must have been asking the question to herself, wow, was that in? Should I question it? No, keep playing the point. And some super backhands there from Hannah Arden. right now. I mean, that ball was right on the baseline, was able to get it back deep. Look at how deep that was, but still Sharapova with the whipping forehand cross court. I mean, the confidence is just huge right now from Sharapova. Five to one in the winners in the second set. One winner from NR Dance for four games. Pretty odd. Trapped her in the corner, came right back with that backhand. Again, that may have looked like an easy shot, but at two all in the second set and down a, a set already, that would have put her down in the game if she had lost that point. So, Anna Nardin showing her champion qualities, being aggressive. 
mean, she has to be aggressive because Sharapova, given any opportunity right now, is going to be. Excellent forehand that time from Ann Ardan. It's good to see both girls taking the opportunity as soon as they get the short one to hit that inside out forehand and come in. Serve. No, 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 Excellent no, no, no. serve from Justin and Arden gave herself a fist pump for that one. A satisfying hold. Three no, games no, 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 no. to two in the second. Two games to two. Second set. And uh, somehow managed to transmit the message that she ought to take a bathroom break after the third set, after the second set. Or the third. Maria serving now. Two games to three in the Second set, she has a set in hand against N. R. Den. French Open champion this year, Justine. And forehand error from Sharapova. Fourth final of the Grand Slam season for N. R. Den. Quite an achievement. And that was a little bit tight, that forehand. That was the first one I've seen from her in a while. Coming up out of it, showing her emotions after missing it, not being quite as aggressive. Good serve. A huge 111 mile an hour serve out wide, which always tends to be a little less on the gun. When you serve down the tee, you seem to get a little bit more miles per hour on your serve. So when it's that hard out wide, very difficult for a one-hander, or for anyone in that matter, to control that kind of a serve. Exactly what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter. It's a final of the Grand Slam. That's a shot Justine and Arden will make 20 out of 20 times in regular circumstances. But not a great volley, but it's just the, the presence of somebody that you have to hit this well. You have to hit a winner on it. And the difference there, if Maria had been on the baseline, she probably would have made that forehand. She knows how big an error that was. 30-15. Deep and hard from Sharapova. 40-15. Ton of confidence being shown by this woman tonight, this 19-year-old. And Hennon's got to start thinking, what have I got to do here? She stood in a little bit further there. She's trying to cut off that serve that we were talking about. Makes a great return and still loses the point. And she's being outplayed. It's, it's that simple, although the game is... The match is so close at this point that you can still turn it around. It's not that she's being routed, but she is being outplayed. Oh. Well, she gets a little luck. She gets a few errors. So the can turn. I was saying how difficult that usually is here at the U.S. Open, and such a tight net. And but the difference was there with that one. It hit on, right top, on top of the net. Yeah. So the chances of it going over are a lot better.
Longest rally of the match. And what a point. Won by N.R. Dan. A lot of great shots. Sharapova wanted to get around on the forehand for the last one. She wasn't quite able to get set. Wound up dumping into the net, but that was an exciting point. A big save by Sharapova on one right behind the baseline. You know she knows how big that point was. That could be a turning point in her opinion because Sharapova really played a great point again, hit the inside out forehand, came in, and Hennon made a fantastic backhand down the line passing shot that Sharapova was still able to get. And that is key to me. Twice now in the last two points where she's lost a point having played well but losing the point. She comes back with a big serve. Both of them happen to the aces. And that's what we were talking about. Hennon standing back there saying, what do I have to do? Game point again for Sharapova. That was 114 down the tee. That's <laughs> long. Let that forehand get away from her. Tough service game here for Sharapova. Back to Deuce. Now, having run that backhand down and hit such a great passing shot, is that going to force Sharapova to think that she has to hit it even better? And maybe that's why she missed that last forehand. Important for her to continue to keep hitting the same shot. Got the line. Beautiful serve from Sharapova under pressure. Now, from my standpoint as a player, as well as I'm hitting it on the juice side here, it's not the important point. The important point's this one. I want the free point here. So we'll see what kind of a serve she can muster on, on game point. Not bad. And a big come on for that one as she stayed in charge of the point. Right from the serve. And she's even at three here. No breaks in this second set thus far. Herb service game from Sharapova. And this is kind of the situation that Anna usually does to people. She kind of hangs around and hangs around when she gets down in a point or down in a game where it's close. The big serve comes out, the great tenacious running down of balls, forcing her opponents into mistakes, hitting winners, and they think to themselves, what do I have to do? And tonight, that's completely being flipped around, and Sharapova is asserting herself as that person. And again, we just reiterate uh, their, their past matches at 4-1 in favor of Justine N. Arden. They haven't played since early this year. Played twice early, Australian, Open, and Dubai. Sharapova is quite a different player. It's long, and she was uh, earlier this year. Time out with a couple of injuries, <laughs> one uh, an ankle, the other a shoulder problem. So both of them missed some time during the, the season. Sharapova has made a great advancement. Well, in her uh, in, in her playing ability in this year, I believe. Well, since since that loss, those two losses to Hannah, she has since won two tier ones as well on hard. Court. Come on. The tier, tier one it's events are now the highest level of WTA events outside of the Grand Slams on our regular tour. She won in Miami, which is almost like a Grand Slam. It's a sort mm -hmm. of a two week event, and you see Hannah just rushing that back in again, but and then about five weeks ago in San Diego where she beat Kim Kleisters in the final. And Kleisters really the hottest player on hard court usually over the summer. That's a great serve from N.R. Dan. Trying to turn things around here. Jules one down the tee. 1-13. 15 Two fierce competitors. Another good serve on the air from Sharapova on the return. Just didn't quite finish on that forehand again. Came up out of it a little bit, and that's when the ball tends to fly. When you're all at home and you wonder why you're hitting the ball out, it's because you need to follow through on the forehand. Oh! You 
follow through on the ball, that's what gives you the control. It gives you the spin. You look at someone like a Nadal or a Federer who just accelerates so much on their ground strokes. Wide. I like that. He took a little off both of those shots to Sharapova. He try to really pound them, but they were nice and deep. And Arden trying to make the big shot winds up knocking it out. Well, him and Arden, not a tall girl, only five foot five, maybe on a good day. Yeah. So those high balls are sometimes effective, but you have to be careful. You cannot play them over and over because she's so aggressive with them. She gets well inside the baseline and just releases everything on top of them. Game point for 4 3, a second serve, and Arden. Nail biting set. No breaks. Way out of the second serve. And only the second one of the entire match, considering that about this stage yesterday, we'd seen about 10 to 12 double faults from him. So only the second one and the first one of the set. Could be a telling double fault, that one. First serve percentage at 59% in the set 55 for the match, which is not great. It's not horrible, but it's not great. down. But the good Great finish. Point. Sorry, Tim, on the forehand there with the return, impressive finishing it. And Sharapova makes good contact and releases the forehand. That's when she hits it really well. So if she's tight. We're going to see if she can do it here. This is huge. Yeah. Second serve, and Christine swats that with a little anger. She's got to have something good on her second serve here. As she's down, a break. And a set. Deep shot. Forehand air. Deuce. It's amazing as tennis players and coaches and, and husbands and everyone. It's amazing what your mind can do to you in certain situations. If that had been, say, 15 all in the first set, she probably would have made that forehand. But she knows the magnitude of that point. Got a little nervous on that forehand. And a pressing on her first serve. Trying to back up Sharapova. She missed that by two feet. Leighton Hewitt style from Maria. Another break point. Nodding love at the intensity of both of these players out here. And Sharapova just saying, come on. After that excitement, you have to try and calm your nerves, keep the feet moving, stay focused. Three break points. She's had. Third one here and the second serve to look at. Has it been one challenge tonight? Um, it was one very early. And it is. Sharapova. Sharapova. Up a set and a break now. Late in the second set. Four games to three. Tremendous event, a tremendous achievement, and all of the emotions flooded out of that man. He brought his daughter over from Siberia, literally, to Bradenton, Florida, as a child. And she grew up learning to play tennis under the tutelage there of the voluntary coaching staff. And now in pursuit of her second Grand Slam in the Big Apple. What it would mean here for this young woman who's now up to $19, $20 million in endorsements. Now, this is the glamour capital of the universe, and for her to win it here just adds all of that kind of glory as well. But trust me, as Renee will back me up, what matters to her is being the best woman tennis player in the world. And 
good start here in this game. Tonight, she has absolutely proven herself on a big stage again in the Grand Slam final. She's getting back a lot of the Hennon shots that, that usually sometimes will make, she'll make a mistake on. And then when she's getting, getting the opportunity, she's hitting the big shots, the big serves, the big forehands, coming in every now and again, putting pressure on her. Well, the overall style of play tonight has been as aggressive as you said at the outset it needed to be against a player of the stature of Justine Anna Arden. I'm not referring to her physical stature. <laughs> well, she's an imposing figure on the tennis court, well, even bet. though she's small. Yeah. She There's an attitude and a presence out there that she's earned, and it is intimidating. Wide. The defense, though, from Sharapova. Those balls are very deep from Hennon. Not rushing, not trying to play outside of herself right now, realizing that she's hitting the ball better than Hennon is. Well, she's got Hennon on the run. It's usually the other way around with most of Hennon's opponents. Well, when you're serving at 75% in this set alone on first serves, that certainly makes a difference, especially for Maria Sharapova. An ace for 5-3. She is a game away from the U.S. Open Championship. A dominating performance that's gotten stronger with each game of the match and almost with every point. Now this is where all of the hours in the practice court, all of those, the sweat and the, and the yelling at one another, the Yuri, yell, one more Thank serve, you. Maria, one more serve until you get it right. That's, this is where it shows. In a Grand Slam final, stepping up to give herself a 5-3 lead with a 98 mile an hour serve, ace down the tee. Just too good in every sense of the term. And again, remember all of those hours. Remember how many forehands we've hit down the line. Don't try and play outside of yourself. Detach from the outcome of this game and play the shots like you would if you were standing on a back court somewhere here practicing for three hours. And if you can do that in these moments, that's when champions are born. Blood, sweat, and tears all paying off. Maria Sharapova, who is now three points away from her second Grand Slam. Feisty Hannah Arden, keeping her out there, 15 all. Sharapova. Looking at that ball, is it out? Oh, should I challenge? Should I challenge? This is such a big point. You want it to be out so bad, and it's well inside the court. A fantastic shot from Hennon, just hanging in, hanging in, knowing herself how hard it is to win a Grand Slam title, and the nerves she knows, they're just streaming out of Sharapova right now. So her goal is to stay in this match. Important for her not to give away anything free right now. Let make Sharapova earn it. Because she knows having won many Grand Slams in her career, winning that last point is not easy. Your arm gets heavy, your feet get heavy, your heart feels like it's going to jump out of your chest. For the backhand. He's had only a handful of, of really bad errors. And shanks and missing big time. Yeah, considering how aggressive she's been this whole the whole match. Only 11 unforced errors in this set, which may seem like a lot, but she's really going for it. And three in this game. And an ace. For the hold for N.R. Dan, so Maria Sharapova will have to serve for the match, which she'll do when we return. Five games to four. Second set. A stat that they just showed on the big screen here on 
the center court at Arthur Ashe that we could see one break point the entire match. It's unbelievable. That just shows you how well Sharapova is playing on serve. The first point of this game, Thank you. other than the match point, in my Ready opinion, to win the match is the biggest point. Sharapova needs to get off to a good start in this game. Sharapova has to try and cut out all the noise right now and just play the point like she has been every time she's gotten up to serve tonight. Difficult to do. right now of Justine Bennett. You can just feel it. She's running down every ball. She's trying to make the ball a little bit more aggressive than she has. She knows, I need to get off to a good start in this game or I'm gone. Love 15. Ah! Come on! Excellent Thank serve. 101 down the tee. All night long, that serve down the tee has won her so many service games. 101, not a huge serve. Again, Hannon standing a long way behind the baseline. By the time that ball actually gets to her, her racket is covering the ball. She's hitting way too many of them into the net. Another big serve. Oh, what a drive. Forehand. The serve set it up. She got a weak reply. No hesitation, no insecurity. And this is the forehand, the one all night, inside out. If I can continue to hit this shot right here, I'm going to be a US Open champion. Good serve, good forehand. 30-15. Ah! Oh, that is a huge mistake from Hinnon to allow Sharapova now serve for the match with two match points. Again, very important for Sharapova to cut out all the noise and play at this point. Don't rush. Sharapova is the U.S. Open champion. It's sinking in. She wanted it so badly. Her second Grand Slam title. This one at the age of 19. Now wants to get to her dad. Get some security help over there. Her mom doesn't come to these matches. She can't deal with it. I'm not sure Yuri can either, but he comes. And she's going to go up and get a hug from dad as she did at Wimbledon. But she was just outgunned tonight by the lanky Russian who is enjoying every thrilling moment of this in New York City where they know how to celebrate and to congratulate their favorite Maria Sharapova.